five friends get a genetic mutation after an incident during an interdimensional travel. Can they still go back to their old normal life? Let's find out in the movie. In the year 2007, a young Reed Richards shares with his class during career day that he wants to be the first person in human history to teleport himself. Being a genius at such a young age, Reed focuses on quantum science and teleportation technology. He confidently tells the class that he's currently building his very own teleportation machine called Biomatter Shuttle. Ben Grimm is the next one to be called up front to share his dream career. On his way up front, he sees Reed writing different equations in his notebook. Later that night, at the Grimm salvage shop, Ben catches Reed trying to look for a power converter, saying that he needs it for the biomatter shuttle. He then offers to show the machine to Ben if he lets him have a power converter for free. Arriving at Reed's garage, which is his current workshop, Ben decides to assist him in finishing the machine. After setting up the finishing touches, Reed starts the machine and uses a mini car toy as a test subject. To Ben's surprise, Reed successfully teleports the mini car toy somewhere else. But his success also causes the power supply in the neighborhood to short circuit, leading to a blackout. Years later, at a science fair, Reed and Ben, who have become best friends, present their new version of the teleportation machine, now called Cymatic Matter Shuttle. According to Reed, this upgraded version of the Biomatter Shuttle can not only teleport things somewhere, but also bring them back. They show a live demonstration to the panel of judges using a model plane Reed borrows from a child. The first phase of teleporting the toy has no problem, but as they get it back, it causes a small power surge breaking the glass of the basketball ring. Reed tries not to mind it, but the panels still disqualify them. Luckily for them, everything is not yet over for their project. Reed's and Ben's machine catches the attention of Dr. Franklin Storm, a scientist and the director of Baxter Foundation, a government-funded research institution, together with Franklin and his adopted daughter, Sue. After inspecting the machine, the scientist reveals to the two that they are also sending test subjects to other dimensions. Franklin explains that sending things to other dimensions is the easy part, yet they never manage to bring those things back. And this day, Reed just did what they couldn't. The scientist congrats him for cracking interdimensional travel. Reed cannot believe the other dimension thing because he thinks that they're just sending the test subjects somewhere on the planet. Just then, Sue shows him a test tube containing sand that is the same as the sand he found on the plane model earlier. She states that they already analyzed the sand repeatedly, but nothing on Earth matches these particles. At this moment, Franklin offers Reed a full scholarship at the Baxter Foundation. The next day, Ben helps Reed move into the foundation and gives Reed his utility Swiss knife as a present. He seems kind of frustrated that only Reed gets a scholarship, yet still feels proud of his best friend. After a while, Reed comes across Sue at the library. He tries to start a conversation with her, showing her his favorite book, Captain Nemo, but it doesn't go very well. Sue presumes that she thinks Reed builds his creation for fame, to which he denies, and argues that what he wants is to make a difference. Sue then calls him Captain Nemo, encouraging him to go for it, and leaves. Franklin is having a meeting with the board about the expedition to a supposed new world. He explains that if they access this new world, they can use its resources and maybe even find a way to save their own planet. But upon scanning the documents, Dr. Harvey Allen, a government scientist, sees the name of the man named Victor Von Doom and questions it. As it turns out, this Victor once burned all of Franklin's data servers before leaving him. But he's still willing to give the man a second chance because Victor has a lot of potential. Promising that he will personally supervise Victor, Franklin assures the board that they will reach the new world. After the meeting, he goes to Victor and tries to recruit him to the research team. At first, Victor declines, but upon knowing that Sue will be part of the team, he changes his mind. Back in the Baxter Foundation, Reed, Sue, and the others begin working on a massive teleportation machine based on Reed's design. Looking at the blueprint, Sue states that during his experiments before, he was ripping a hole in the fabric of space and time, which can cause a black hole and could swallow the entire planet. Hearing this, 
Reed is glad that it never happened. Sometime later, Franklin and Victor arrive. Seeing the two, Reed and Sue follow them and find Victor scanning Reed's drawings and equations. Franklin introduces the two men to each other and tells Reed that Victor is the one who started the project. There, Sue and Victor show Reed an image they took from the other world before. Franklin tells them that this new planet could be used to save their own, but Victor doesn't think that the Earth deserves to be saved. Being the pessimist he is, Sue calls him Dr. Doom. In turn, Franklin points out that the mistakes of the old generations can be fixed by the new generations, and this new world is their chance to change the Earth for the better. Of course, the three young geniuses don't hesitate to agree, however, Victor wants them to be the team to go to the new world. Somewhere else, Franklin's son, Johnny Storm, is competing in an illegal car race. When he's about to win, the engine of his car explodes and he crashes into an electric post. A little later, his father picks him up from the hospital, still in disbelief that Johnny is racing again. Inside the car, the two argue about Johnny wasting his potential to what according to his father are senseless things. Due to that, Franklin tells him that he will not get his car back unless he works for him. Left with no other choice, Johnny comes with his father to the Baxter Foundation. At this time, the whole research team is finally complete. Day by day, they all work hard, with Reed and Victor on the formulation, Sue on the suit creation, and Johnny on the construction. Over time, the four begin to bond as well, especially Reed, who's technically new to the group since Sue, Johnny, and Victor already know each other. Finally, the day that the team finally finishes building the teleportation machine has come, and they call it the Quantum Gate. Later that night, Reed sends a picture of the machine to Ben, thanking him for everything that he has done for him. After that, he and Sue talk about their personal life. Seeing this, Victor gets jealous and says that he is being unprofessional. But his mood changes upon hearing Reed says they're already finished with the system of the Quantum Gate. The next day, Harvey and the board arrive at the Baxter Foundation to witness the live demonstration. For the first organic test, they used a monkey as a test subject and see in the video feed what the other world they call Planet Zero looks like. Upon the monkey's successful return, interdimensional travel using Quantum Gate is proven to be effective and safe. Harvey then congratulates the team for creating the machine. But to their surprise, the government will send people from NASA for the expedition instead of them, the creators. Seeing how disappointed they are, Dr. Franklin promises them that he will convince the board to change their mind. When Sue follows her father, the three men hide from the others to drink. At this time, Drunk Reed convinces Victor and Johnny that they should go to the other world and make their marks there before anyone else does. To pay homage to the very first person who helps him build his dream, Reed calls Ben to join them, who shortly after arrives at the foundation and suits up together with them for the expedition. As the four men get into the pods, Sue, who's been working in the office, gets alerted that the quantum gate has been activated. She immediately goes to the lab while notifying her father about the situation. But when she gets there, the four men are already teleported to the other world. On Planet Zero, the four men are in awe upon stepping on this world's soil for the first time. When Reed and Ben put up the American flag, the ground breaks a little and they see a glowing green light beneath it. They then check on the place where Victor thinks the energy is converging. Upon knowing that they need to go down a cliff, Johnny decides to stay at the top to be the anchor as the three climb down. There, they see a green lava-like substance. Placing his hand near it, Victor discovers that it's responding to a physical stimulus. As Victor submerges his hand further, the substance explodes, causing the ground to erupt. The three men run back to the rope and climb immediately with Johnny supporting their weights. However, Victor falls hanging on the rope. Reed tries to pull him up, but the erupting green substance reaches Victor. As it spreads over Victor's body, Reed accidentally lets go of him. To make matters worse, the substance melts off his rope, causing Victor to fall back down to the surface. With no other options, Reed and Ben continue climbing, and along with Johnny, they go back inside their pods. However, the re-entry is not working, so Reed can't send them back to Earth. 
Fortunately for them, Sue just gets their signals back and helps them by manually overriding their re-entry. She successfully teleports them back, but not before Johnny succumbs to flames and Ben is hit by rocks. The impact of their return causes a shockwave that knocks Sue down and causes blackouts to the whole city. When Reed regains consciousness, he immediately sees Johnny burning. Because of this, he starts looking for Ben, but his legs are pinned by a pillar. As he hears Ben calling for him, Reed crawls in the direction of his best friend's voice. He reaches a pile of rocks, thinking that Ben is pinned down inside. Reed promises to get him out of there, but when he looks back, he sees his legs unusually stretching from where they're pinned by the pillar. Shocked, Reed faints again. The next day at Area 57, the scientists are now examining Reed's stretched body. As soon as Reed wakes up, he immediately starts looking for his friends. He gradually gets emotional, so the scientist makes him fall asleep again. At the same time, Franklin comes to see his children. First, he is brought to Sue, who's shifting in and out of the visible spectrum. The good thing is her vitals are all stable. Then he sees Johnny, who is still burning. When Johnny wakes up, he starts to panic and releases an explosion. He sits up, seeing his father looking at him with pity. A little later, Reed wakes up again and hears Ben calling for help. With all of his strength, he decreases his arms to their normal length and goes through the vent. Looking through the grills, Reed sees that Ben has turned into a human rock. At this time, the whole facility is alerted of Reed's escape. After promising that he will figure out how to solve what happened to them, Reed continues to escape alone. As it turns out, the accident during interdimensional travel gives them unique abilities. Later, Harvey visits Ben and manipulates him into thinking that Reed has abandoned them. Then, he says that the government and Area 57 can find a way to fix what happened to them. But in return, they will need help with their service. After just a year, being able to control their abilities much better now, Ben, Johnny, and Sue have become great tools for the government, especially Ben. Harvey discusses this with the Pentagon and proposes another quantum gate project aiming to turn the United States military into the likes of Ben, Johnny, and Sue. At Area 57, Johnny and Sue argue about what they should do with their newfound abilities. Johnny wants to use his powers for something useful like partaking in different missions like Ben. But Sue believes that they should just stay put and wait before they get fixed, pointing out that she doesn't want to be treated as a tool. Meanwhile, Harvey arrives with his friends from the Pentagon and shows them the Quantum Gate. There, he introduces them to Franklin, who's now personally overseeing the procedure every day. Seeing the machine in person, the generals finally agree to give their support to the project in exchange for utilizing Ben and Johnny more on the field. Hearing this, Franklin doesn't like the idea of the government using any of his children as mere tools. Due to this, he talks to Sue and tells her that they need to find Reed as soon as possible because he's the only one who knows how to make the quantum gate work. The sooner they activate it, the sooner they might find a cure for the four of them and their lives will finally go back to normal. Convinced, Sue begins tracking Reed's digital imprints to find a pattern. She discovers that he has been collecting scrap metals and always keeping himself updated about Ben. After putting up music, she patiently waits for Reed's next move. The scene then changes to him buying another metal scrap. By morphing his face to look different, Reed has been freely going around without anyone recognizing him, collecting scrap metals to build a quantum gate of his own. But as soon as he uses a computer, Sue manages to track him because he's using the codename Captain Nemo. After that, Area 57 sends a team to capture Reed right away. When he gets alerted of the incoming intruder, Reed quickly runs to the woods. He gets cornered immediately, but the soldiers do not realize that Reed knows how to utilize his ability to fight, making them struggle to catch him. However, to Reed's surprise, they then deploy Ben to catch him. He tries to explain himself to his friend, but Ben refuses to listen and gives him a headbutt. On the plane back, Reed apologizes for leaving Ben and the others. Reed promises that he will fix everything, but as it turns out, Ben knows that Harvey doesn't want to fix them. The government likes them better when they have their abilities because Ben and the others will be more useful as a weapon. When they arrive in Area 57, Sue talks to Reed and convinces him to help them fix the gate, telling him that this is the chance for his work to make a difference. 
he finally agrees to help and makes the Quantum Gate 2 work almost immediately. During the teleportation trial to Planet Zero, Reed and Johnny see each other again, and unlike Ben, Johnny has no hard feelings for Reed. As the crew steps out to the other world, they see a man approaching them, and it's none other than Victor. All of them are surprised that he manages to survive that long on Planet Zero. The crew attends to Victor, and Harvey orders them to come back to Earth right away. As Victor is examined, they discover that his suit is already fused with his body. Harvey tells him that they will work on it and help him in exchange for him telling them everything he knows about Planet Zero. According to Victor, the place keeps him alive and gives him immense power. Just then, he telepathically kills everyone in the room. Afterward, Victor goes out and kills everyone in his path. As the alarm goes off, Ben sees Reed and asks if he's trying to run away again, to which Reed says no. On the other side, Johnny and Sue come across each other and start looking for their father, Franklin, who is actually trying to stop Victor from going back to Planet Zero at the moment. But Victor has no plans on staying. Just then, Johnny and Sue arrive and witness how he kills their father. Reed then arrives at the scene along with Ben, trying to talk to Victor, who just simply telepathically shoves him away. In his dying words, Dr. Franklin reminds his children to look after each other. As soon as Victor arrives at Planet Zero, he starts overloading the Quantum Gate to create a vortex that will pull everything from Earth to the other world. Angry about his father's death, Johnny flies to the portal to Planet Zero, and Sue creates a force field around her, Reed, and Ben so they can catch up. Seeing how the vortex works, Reed deduces that the matter from Earth is being converted into energy. The only way to shut it down is to stop the source itself, which is Victor. Johnny and Ben attack separately, but Victor doesn't even break a sweat in taking them down. He covered Johnny with smaller rocks and mud to kill off his fire while attacking bigger rocks to Ben, making it hard for him to move. Meanwhile, Sue creates a massive force field that prevents the debris from Earth from falling into the Quantum Gate. Seeing this, Victor also sands in smaller rocks to detect where Sue is hiding. As the particles engulf the force field around her, the weight causes her to fall. Reed attempts to talk Victor out of it again, but he's not listening and tells Reed to call him Doom, spreading the green substance to Reed's body and making it loose like old rubber. Sue then tries to attack Doom directly, but he just pins her down using his ability. Seeing his friends suffering and dying, Reed musters up his strength and regains control of his body. He attacks Doom and throws him off a cliff. When Doom rises from the cliff, Ben throws him a huge rock as a distraction. Then, Sue traps him inside a force field where he succumbs to Johnny's flames. Just as Doom gets out of Sue's force field, Reed engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat with him. And to Doom's surprise, this is just another diversion as Ben, with the help of Sue, comes out of invisibility and punches Doom to the quantum gate. And for the last part of their attack, Johnny breaks all the pillars, causing Doom to be turned into energy. Seeing that their plan worked, the four of them immediately go back to Earth before the portal closes. After the incident, they receive gratitude from the Pentagon for saving the world, who also wants to keep their existing relationship, but the four want to go independent from here on. Asking for a large space to work on, they develop a new Baxter building. Just then, Reed thinks that the four of them should have a superhero team name. The movie ends with them coming up with the name Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four 2015 received a lot of negative reviews from critics and fans when it was released, and it is very understandable where these criticisms are coming from. It's only a shame that this movie sets up a good character buildup for Reed Richards, Sue and Johnny Storm, Ben Grimm, and Victor Doom, but not for Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Girl, Human Torch, The Thing, and Doctor Doom. As normal people, they have a good character arc, but when they get their powers, everything collapses. Also, the overall execution of the plot is mediocre, and some lines are cheesy. This can still be an enjoyable movie, however, you will just have to lower your expectations.